In this chapter, chapter 14, the text covers the importance of understanding different evaluation methods. In this chapter, the chapter breaks it into two different types of evaluations, one being formative evaluations, which are done very early in the product development life cycle to discover insights and shape the design direction. Additionally, this type of evaluation typically involves usability methods or usability testing with low fidelity prototypes. The second method, summative evaluations, is similar to what it sounds like. Basically, it, these are typically done toward the end of the product development life cycle with a high fidelity prototype. These two different types of evaluation methods can be applied to a variety of methodologies as shown in this image. In addition, it is important to point out that each methodology may require a different type of low or high fidelity prototype. There are a few things one should be aware of during evaluations. One suggestion is to have a third party person conduct the evaluations. This helps in preventing bias. Additionally, the person conducting the evaluation should recruit participants that are not just fans or critics of your company or product. One should um, strive to use a range of tasks that are not just the best or worst of your product or service. It is important to use nonverbal and neutral language when directing the participants in a specific way. And finally, it is very important to be true to the data rather than interpreting what the participant might be thinking. In this chapter, multiple types of evaluations were analyzed and explained. We will discuss these different evaluations in the coming slides. The first one, heuristic evaluations. Jacob Nielsen and Rolf Mollick introduced the heuristic valuation as a way to save practitioners time and money over the standard lab usability study. They argued that there are 10 heuristics that products should adhere to for a good user experience. These heuristics are shown here. Visibility of system status, which basically means to keep the user informed about the status of your system and give them feedback. Match between system and the real world. Use terminology and concepts the user is familiar with. User control and freedom, which basically means that it's important for users to control what happens in the system. Consistency in standards, important to be consistent throughout your product. Error prevention, which is important for those using this system to the greatest extent possible to help users and avoid making errors. Recognition rather than recall. Do not force users to rely on their memory to use your system. Instead, help them recognize. Flexibility and efficiency of use. Make accelerators available for expert users, but hidden for novice ones. Aesthetic and minimalist design. It's important to avoid irrelevant information. Help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. Although your system should prevent errors in the first place, when, this, when they do happen, it's important to provide error messages in clear terms. And finally, help documentation. Ideally, your system should be used without documentation, thus making it brief, easy, and co comprehensive throughout. Cognitive walkthroughs are where people can learn systems by trying to accomplish tasks with it rather than first reading through instructions. This is ideal for products that are meant to not have any training required. Usability testing is a systematic observation of end users attempting to complete a task or set of tasks. With your product based on representative scenarios, part of this usability testing is a lab study, which is very useful if your company or university have a UX lab for testing purposes. The next evaluation method is eye tracking, which was first used in a cognitive psychology. However, the HCI community has adapted it to a study where people look, or in this case, perhaps do not look, for information or functionality and for how long. Additionally, it is the one type of evaluation methodology we, where you do not want participants to think aloud as they interact with your product. 
As demonstrated here with this image, the longer participants gaze or stay fixed on a spot, the hotter the area is on the map, thus indicated by the color red. In 2002, the Microsoft Games division developed Rapid Iterative Testing and Evaluation, or RITE Write, as a method to address issues that prevent participants from proceeding in a game and evaluating the experience. Write is designed to quickly identify any usability issues that may be preventing users from completing a task. The CAFE study evaluation is when a researcher conducts a 5 to 10 minute study with guests that visit a CAFE. This type of study is useful to collect a lot of data in a very short period of time in order to inform product direction and identify critical usability issues. When learning in the field, it is very useful to understand how people will react to a product in the real world. This can be done either very early or at times much later in the product development life cycle, depending on the goals of the project. Donald Norman argued that aesthetically pleasing products are actually more effective. In desirability testing, the tester evaluates whether or not a product elicits the desired emotional response from users. It is not always possible or even desirable to, to conduct evaluations with participants in person. In the evaluation method called remote testing, one can gather data from participants outside of their geographic area. Another benefit of remote testing is that one can typically collect feedback from a much larger sample size in a short period of time. In live experience, from an HCI standpoint, it is a summative evaluation method that involves comparing two or more designs to see which performs better. To avoid, to avoid biasing the results, users in industry studies are usually not informed they are part of an experience. However, in academia, consent is often required. This type of experiment often uses A and B testing, where a percent of users are shown one design, A, and then evaluate based on a comparison to another version, B. Another, th another area that is used for live experience is multivariate testing, which follows the same principle, but in this case, multiple variables are manipulated to examine how changes in these variables interact to result in the ideal combination. Finally, this chapter moves on to understanding data anal analysis and interpretation. In addition to identifying usability issues, there are a few metrics one should consider when collecting a summative evaluation. One is time on tasks, or the length of time to complete a task, number of errors, which are errors made completing a task and or across the study, the completion rate, the number of participants that complete the task successfully, the satisfaction, overall how satisfied participants are in a given task, page views or clicks, this can be a measure of efficiency, one can compare the number of page views or clicks by a participant against the most efficient path, and finally, conversion as to whether or not participants converted or successfully completed their desired task. Finally, in conclusion, the chapter ended on communicating the findings. This discusses how to document the findings in order to avoid repeating any of the same mistakes. It is often important to, when using a small sample size or informal studies, to consider the evaluations such as cognitive walkthrough, a cafe study, or write. In contrast, when using a larger or more complex study, you, one might consider using eye tracking, live experiments, or um, other sorts of methodologies that would need a much larger study. You, will, you would want to include a description of this methodology, participant, demographics, and graphs.